Ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased to introduce John Rahm to the interview room. John, welcome back to the Masters. Thank you. John has played in six Masters. He has four top ten finishes. We'll begin the interview with questions in English and then leave time for uh, Spanish. John, uh, with those past experiences, what have you learned that you're applying to your preparations for this year? <laughs> I feel like it's very difficult to apply everything you learn from each round here at Augusta National. I think the, ma the, the main thing is you get an idea of how to, how to play each hole, get in the golf course, get to play the golf course in every single wind, every single possible conditions, right, which every year I feel like the weather's been a little bit different and we've seen different things. So um, just getting that knowledge helps. You've had remarkable success on the PGA Tour so far this year, but as a test of golf, how different is this than what you see week in and week out on the PGA Tour? And as a result, does it make how you were playing before not maybe as indicative as it would be for another major? I mean, you can always, the, the form you're on can always be indicative on to, you know, on how, how good a chances you have, but at the end of the day, it's a new week, right? What you've done before doesn't really matter. Period. There's been many times where there's players that haven't had their best year, but for some reason they, they come out here and, and they feel confident on their chances and they've done good golf, right? Uh, some of the lefties come to mind. have always come out here and, and have good performances. Obviously, Tiger, every time he came out here, it seemed like he had a good chance. Jordan, no matter what, he's up on the radar, right? So, uh, again, there's something about this golf course. I think it's because it allows you to play however you want to play it that always gives every player a chance, right? There's multiple options of the tee, multiple options into greens. You can, there's not one style of golf. You can pretty much do it however is most comfortable for you. And if you play good golf, you, you might be able to get it done. Sean. Yeah, the number of times you play here, the experience you build up, a lot of guys say they get more comfortable. Certain things get easier. I'm curious, as time goes on, you rack up uh, tournament experience here. Is there anything that gets tougher? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say anything gets more difficult. Um, I mean, not to keep talking about the same hole I think everybody talks about, it, but 12 doesn't seem to get any easier anytime you play it. There's other holes that you get more comfortable with. That one just depends on the wind gust and, and if you pull the right club or not, right? Uh, that would be the only thing I would say. Is there one hole out here that I think has a question mark for all of us because it's just depending on the day. There's been days where you get there, the wind's dead, and it's the easiest nine iron you'll hit. And there's days where the wind's a little swirly and you know, the club ranges. You have no idea what the wind's doing. You kind of have to get comfortable with your, your choice and, and try to execute, right? And you see a little bit of everything. Every other hole, though, I think you can pretty much manage your game pretty well out there. That one is just the margin of error is so small. John, there's a clear gap now between the world's top three and everybody else. What have you, Scotty, and Rory got that nobody else has? I want to know what to tell you. Um, I, I really don't know exactly what to say. Uh, they usually points Point difference might be a lot larger than what the actual game difference might be between the three of us, if that makes any sense, right? Uh, if we're talking about half a shot around, that's just absolutely nothing. That's one good bounce, and there's a difference, right? So, uh, But you create your own luck, I guess. So uh, we've just been playing in good form and feeding off each other. And obviously, since well, Scotty starting it last year and myself later on the fall, we just, we've been able to rack up more wins than, than anybody else. And I mean, it boils down to that, just being able to get it done. Like you motivate, inspire and push each other to be better? I think so, yeah. I mean, I, I was there on Sunday with Scotty when he won on Phoenix and he never liked that feeling, right? So when I went to LA, I definitely fed off of that on, on that Sunday round. Really? On, uh, are, you, are you a big believer in kind of momentum from tournament to tournament? And if so, did the, did, did the players in that week, did that kind of slow any kind of role that you may have been on? Well, if anything was going to slow anything down, it would have been Arnold Palmer and our players. Um, actually, it felt really comfortable at players in the first round. Um, didn't make the putts that I wanted to make, but it was a very comfortable T-degree ball striking round. I was looking forward to it uh, throughout the rest of the week. It's just... 
can't, you know, sometimes life gets on the way in that sense. But um, no, I, I'm, I'm a week to week type of guy. Uh, just because, you know, it's a, if you believe that something like that can stop positive momentum, when you get in a negative run, you know, how can you change that, right? It's just, if you're hope, waiting for something outside yourself to change things, I don't think it's the best way to look at it in my, in my, my mind. Uh, every single tournament I go to, my, my plan is to win. And my mind doesn't deviate from that. So I would say, again, I'm more of a week-to-week -week type of guy. John, with respect to, to data points, at the end of the week, if there are one or two that will be reflective of you having a great week, what would they be? Well, it's hard to say. Um, historically, it's not a golf course where people, when they go to win, hit a ton of fairways or a ton of greens. Somebody told me the average green hit percentage was in the 60-some percent. Highest winner was Tiger one year with 82%, I believe. This was told to me recently. But I think the one thing everybody has in common is whatever is happening around the greens. Right? If you, if you can limit those mistakes and turn those mistakes into pars, sometimes birdies, maybe sometimes a bogey, you, you're always... That's kind of like the model of major championships, right? If you go back and see Scotty's round last year, how many times did he miss a green and get up and down? make a par and keep the round going, right? And then made a few birdies and distanced himself from the entire field. Uh, so I feel like that's, that's a, key, a key aspect of the game. I would say I would bet Baba, both of his wins, he was up there. Uh, I've talked to Phil many times about this, and he's told me the reason he's comfortable here is because with his short game, he feels like he can be more aggressive than anyone and still get pars and birdies out of it. So, uh, Right. What to say about Jordan Spieth's short game, right? So I would say it's it's a bit of all those things. Obviously, if you get a year where you're here and hitting 70 plus percent of the fairways and 70 plus percent of the greens, so you're definitely having a better chance than everybody else. Hey, John. Um, just curious, can you describe your feelings and mindset on the first tee and how they can change or potentially change from Thursday to Sunday? Hmm. Well. It's a, it's a special situation on that first tee because we rarely get a, an opening tee shot where, you know, the patrons are that close, right? I mean, if you tee it up on the right side of the tee box, you're seeing feet three feet from you, right? That's, that doesn't happen very often. And just from the simple announcement that you get, right, no matter who you are, it's pretty much ready, set, go, right? And, uh, you know, it's an iconic tee shot. Everything, <laughs> everything you see around here is iconic, so... Thursday is, is up there. I feel like Saturday, Friday, Saturday might get a little bit easier, and then Sunday gets obviously Sunday, right? Especially if you're in contention, you, you're aware. Um, and not to say anything, I mean, the first tee shot is difficult. If you dial back, you're going to have a really a mid iron shot into a difficult grain. If you try to take on the bunker a little bit, it's, it plays quite narrow. So, um, not the easiest opening tee shot. It's not one that you can tee up and just swing driver as hard as you can because, you know, trouble, trouble's lurking on that hole everywhere. Jimmy. John, there's obviously a distinguished Spanish history here. I wonder what your earliest memory of watching the Masters was. God. Well, unfortunately, when Ali won his first one, I wasn't born. Uh, on 99, when he won his second one, I was still... I don't think my family has started playing golf yet, so I don't think any of us knew. So some of my earliest... My earliest memory from... Augusta National was Phil's second shot into 14 in 2004. That's my earliest memory. Um, but then obviously I've gone back and seen uh, a lot of playbacks of, what, of what's happened. I'm obviously very aware that it's the 40th anniversary since Sevi's second win out here. Um, uh, so it's, it's something that's important to me, right? I think when Ali won in 99, Sergio was, it was his first start in the Masters. I was an amateur, but still. And when Sergio won, he was my first Masters as well. So I'm hoping that history kind of repeats itself and uh, I get to win someday. John, just an extension of the world ranking question. Uh, there's this concept of big three, which has always been part of golf uh, history and folklore. Arnie, Nicholas, uh, you know, Tiger, Vijay, Phil. Do you think what you guys have done over the past one year is making the new big three? 
Well, I'll say you can say that if we can do it for five, at least five plus years, like like many of those players did, right? Uh, well, even while I mean, while Tiger has, has been on his run in in, in the two thousands, Phil and VJ still managed to win forty five and twenty plus times themselves in that time frame. So, uh, I think for us to be compared to something like that, we have a very long way to go. It could be the start, but still a long way to go. Ken, um, John, uh, your uh, I guess interests are. You seem to know a lot about Tiger and his history. I'm curious, did that, you're really digging into his accomplishments. Did that precede you becoming his peer, or is that more as you've, you know, gotten, gotten to know him? And then second, like, how have you acquired all that knowledge? Like, you seem to know a lot about the details of his of his career. Of, of Tiger, you said? Right, yes. I know a lot of details of a lot of players' career. Uh, I, I, I like history in general, and I love the history of the game, and I like seeing what players have done in the past. I'm a, I'm a golf Junkie, if you if you say that, um, I'm the guy who you know. If the kids don't wake me up even before we have kids, I'm up at 5:36 in the morning looking at reruns of tournaments on YouTube and videos and, and things that players have done just because I like I like it. I just I love the game and I love learning about it. And you can always learn something watching those things uh, and learning. It, it, I wouldn't be able to explain it. I just it's it's something that interests me and I like knowing. Uh, I do it with now other players too. Uh, Right, I think uh, I might have annoyed a few people by recalling uh, 15 of the shots they've done in the past in some tournaments. Always a good one, obviously, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think Rory made a made a, a remark about something like that. I think we're on the Ryder Cup, last Ryder Cup, and I think I was talking to Shane, and I was, t I don't know what shot I was Shane I was talking about, and Rory kind of stopped me and he said, by the way, he's gonna do this with the 15 next shots that you've done in your career that you can remember. So, yeah, I just love it. I love the game, and I love learning about it. In the back. Hi, John. Uh, what are your thoughts on the lengthening of the 13th, and what might your strategy be there this week? <laughs> well, you obviously don't really have a chance to turn the corner as much as people did in the past and, and have a short iron, right? Um, I'm one of those. I've been able to hit an eight iron there into the green, and obviously that's, that's a huge advantage. Um, it's funny you mentioning this. Obviously, I've seen a lot of videos of people hitting a tee shot and then having a long iron into that hole, talking about four irons, two irons, possible woods. So I think they just wanted it to play the way it's meant to be played, right? And it kind of gets to a point that 11 being at par four, being longer than 13, it's a bit odd. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I think uh, you're going to see a lot more layups. Obviously, right, if you don't really quite hug the left side, you can have such a long iron in that a lot of people will probably choose to lay up, but uh, there's still going to be a risk, you know, maybe more so a risk reward aspect to it, because if you're able to hit the green and give yourself an eagle chance, it's, it's going to matter a lot more than it did maybe in the past. Jan. Hello. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, John, if you go back to last year's J.P. McManus Pro-Am, how important was that week for the top players to kind of come together and hash out ideas and start to uh, come up with a vision to reshape the, the PGA Tour? Uh, I think it was, it was important with what was going on in the world of golf to basically show unity to ourselves, right? To show some sense of vision for the PGA Tour as players ourselves. I think that was important, not only for for the tour itself, but just for us players to see that, okay, where's everybody at and where do we want the ship to be going to, right? And that was the beginning of obviously a long process, but I think uh, I'm glad we did it. I think it was, it was needed, right? No, I don't remember last time, let's say the top 10, 15 players of the PGA Tour ever got together to discuss the future, right? And uh, I think it was it was something that was really good for all of us, um, and hopefully, hopefully in the future we don't have to keep doing this because things are going so well. Just one more in English, Daniel. Sort of piggybacking off Alan's question, this week having the 18 live guys here, and it seems like everyone's getting along really nicely. Does it change the dynamic? Does it make you miss them? What, what are your emotions within hanging out around those guys this week? 
Nothing changes, really. Uh, I don't think they feel any different. I don't feel any different with, with having them. Uh, to be honest, when I saw, I saw Dustin first yesterday and then Sergio, I kind of forgot, honestly. Uh, it kind of didn't dawn on me sorry, until I looked down and I saw Dustin wearing foot joys. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, things are different. I kind of forgot, right? I hadn't seen him since the Open Championship, but it didn't really register in my mind to me. It was just Dustin. I feel like I've spent more time playing with them and against them than, than in the, this new dynamic we have. So I don't think it changes at all, at least not in my mind.